Welcome to Skincare Specialist 101. I'm Janine, your host for the series. Skin Science, Anatomy, and Physiology. In the first part of this lesson, we're going to talk about what makes youthful skin, well, appear more youthful, and you'll gain a strong understanding of what causes skin to mature. So let's get started. First of all, what are some signs? Like when you think of youthful looking skin, what are things that you think of? Go ahead and say those out loud or jot those down, but let's go ahead and think about some of those. When you think of people that have really beautiful, flawless skin, very youthful, maybe you think about things like flawless. Oh, her skin is so even, she's so flawless. Very smooth, hydrated, very bouncy, right? Very plump and bouncy, supple firm, and radiant. Maybe you have a couple of other things that you think defines youthful looking skin. Now let's talk about what causes your skin to age, or as I like to say, mature. I want to share kind of upfront that there are factors, things like genetics, heredity, that really do play a huge part um, in how you mature and how you age those are much harder to adjust. I like to call this intrinsic aging. By the way, the natural maturing process, are you ready for this? It begins in your mid twenties. Extrinsic aging, those are external factors and things that we have somewhat more control over. We're gonna review those right now. First up, we have pollution. Yes, pollution absolutely is a major contributor to your skin aging. So pollutants in the air, and by the way, pollution is everywhere. I know that sometimes we think, oh, that's just in big cities, but it's everywhere. Even in the middle of Iowa, in a farm where you think everything is green and crisp, pollution is everywhere, indoors and including outdoors. So pollutants in the air, they basically can coat your skin with a grime. And of course, we know that that can block your pores. Free radicals actually lead to breaking down your skin structure, which absolutely can lead to things like wrinkles, roughness, dehydration, and of course, a loss of elasticity. Sun exposure. This one is probably not a surprise to anyone. We all know now there's so much education out there that UV rays, otherwise known as photo aging, right? Causes major, major advanced aging. And it's one of those things where I always talk about if you're looking for the number one most powerful anti-aging ingredient, it's SPF. So sun exposure, what does it do? It dries your skin, it thickens your skin, and it actually leads to slowing down your cell renewal, which we know is very important to really turn over, especially as we begin to mature, because if you don't, that can lead to fine lines, wrinkles, uneven tone. So obviously always avoid the sun when possible and make sure that you really do wear that sunscreen daily, indoors, outdoors. And by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't give a note about tanning beds. I get it, I've been there. I was one of those that, you know, before I went to the prom or before I went to the beach, I was always like, oh, I need to look so tan, right? So I loved tanning beds and now I am paying the price. So as much as we may love them, absolutely stay away. Those are a huge no-no. Stress and lack of sleep. I bet no one tuning into this has any stress or issues with sleeping, right? <laughs> so it's a normal part of life, but I do want to point out that stress and lack of sleep, it can really affect your skin. You may notice that you break out. Maybe you just feel like your skin is just missing something. It's not as bright. Maybe you feel that your skin is a little bit dehydrated or on the opposite end, sometimes maybe you feel like your skin's a little bit more oily. So it's really important to make sure that you do get enough restorative sleep um, to really make sure that you're giving your skin as well as your body that really important time to repair itself and also to be rejuvenated. 
dehydration. So dehydration, this one can, you know, really, it can make your skin appear dull and nobody wants this, but it exaggerates wrinkles and dark circles. Use yourself as an example. Have you ever had a moment where perhaps you didn't drink as much water as you needed to. And you look down at your hands and you're like, wow, my hands look so crepey. They look so dry. Your skin will always show you what is going on inside of your body. But we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. Smoking. This is another one that I'm sure a lot of you know, but smoking, it does stuff on a scientific level. It actually deprives your skin of much needed oxygen, nutrients, and what happens when it's actually deprived, it can look very dull, it can look lifeless. And of course, smoking also causes very harmful free radicals, which actually weaken your collagen and elasticity, and that accelerates the aging process. Now, does this one surprise anyone? Sleep positions, but it's true. So the way that you can sleep can absolutely increase the appearance of wrinkles. Side sleeping can cause lines on your chin, on your cheeks, sleeping face down can create lines on your forehead. So obviously we need to sleep kind of on our back. You know, it's the best way to prevent those lines, but I get it, right? Haven't you ever woken up? I know I have, and I'm like, oh my goodness, look at that line on my face. When is that going to go away? And I feel like as I have matured, right, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for those lines to kind of plump and fill back out. And I should also let you know, there is an entire channel in our industry that is completely dedicated to alleviating sleep wrinkles. You know, there's things on the market like satin pillowcases. There's even pillows for your body positions. There's even medical grade silicone that you can actually place in different areas on your body. So you can put it on your neck, you can put it on your decollete, on your face, and it's all with the promise that it's going to help to avoid those deep lines while you sleep. Facial expressions, I know. <laughs> So I know that some of you are going to be laughing right about now, and I know you're going to be thinking, huh, you know, I was in pretty great shape before I had kids, and then everything fell to pieces, right? So obviously I'm making fun, but 15,000 facial expressions that you make every single day on average can damage your skin frowning, smiling, squinting. It's the consistent movement of those facial muscles that actually can cause scientifically those skin fibers to actually loosen and slacking. And of course, over time, those creases can become permanent wrinkles. Now, here's a fact, and I wanna share this. Even though smiling does use more muscles, it is believed that it actually takes less effort than frowning. That's because the more you smile, the easier it is to make the expression. And let's do something kind of fun. Here's the thing, fact or fiction. You can just say it out loud or if you're in a group, you guys can write it down. Fact or fiction, blinking your eyes will cause aging. What do you think? Fact or fiction, blinking your eyes will cause aging. It's fiction. Blinking is not going to affect any type of aging. However, you know what does? Squinting in the sun. And that's a double whammy. You're doing the facial expressions and you're having the UV exposure. So I know we've tried to incorporate a little bit of humor, right? About our skin aging and maturing. It is a natural part of life. Um, but here are the things. Let's talk about some things that maybe you could do to help your skin, you know, remain healthy and in the best shape possible. So why don't you jot things down, say things out loud, but let's think about some ideas. Hmm, how about avoiding the sun, right? Now listen, real life, we can't avoid the sun altogether, but that's why SPF is so critical. Even including making sure if you're driving, don't forget that critical SPF on your hands, on your arms, basically everywhere, indoors and outdoors. Drinking water. Drinking water, that's a great solution, right? To avoiding dehydration. It also is so great for your body and it's gonna do so many good things for you. Good rest. 
right? Isn't that nice? I mean, when was the last time any of you, you know, actually got eight hours of sleep? But listen, when we can, it's not about the length of time, but it's about the quality of rest. So make sure that you're taking a few moments before you go to bed. Maybe it's with your skincare routine where you just kind of start to kind of you know, shut down peacefully on the day. And then maybe we kind of wrap up being on our phones and then we try to get some rest. Exercise, moving is everything. And I know that that's probably something on all of our list in terms of really making sure that we're constantly moving. Eating healthy, it goes without saying that, you know, they always say you are what you eat. So we always wanna make sure that we're eating as healthy as possible. Reducing stress. And I'll tell you what, when you figure this one out, I want you to personally reach out to me and let me know. But all fun aside, it is important as much as possible to try and reduce that stress. Positive outlook. Now, isn't that a fun one? Trying to, you know, always remain optimistic and remain happy. Um, but it really is proven that the more positive your outlook is, the better off you will be. Your skincare routine. Now, this one is no surprise to you that obviously taking good care of care of your skin is really going to make all the difference in the world. And this is one that I wanted to point out. It may not be obvious, but make sure that you actually make time at least once a year to go visit your dermatologist. Really important to have those full body scans. We know that skin cancer is a real thing. So making sure that you're keeping yourself, you know, up to date on all of your visits and all of your checks. Okay, so now that you have a strong understanding of what it means to have youthful looking skin, but most importantly, the factors that contribute to your skin maturing and aging, let's move on to the next part of this lesson and talk about the basic structure of skin.